All righty. Let me, uh, I guess I could look at, okay, the meeting is being recorded. Got it. Okay. Why is that 413-665-283? Oh, that's me. Uh, okay. Um, all right. How come I can't see everybody else? Your video on? on? Here, Here we, we go. go. No, all, right. All, right. all right. Okay. I'd like to bring the meeting to order. It is now 6.04. And um, everyone has the minutes in front of them, and I believe has had the opportunity to read these minutes. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Got a roll call it, Paul. Okay. Brenda? Yes. Donna? Yes. Patty? I don't think she's here, Paul. Yeah, Pat, uh, oh. Patty said she's she's uh, driving back from work, so she may be late if she can make it Okay. At all. Okay, Jim? Yes. Me? Yes. Paul Ante? Yes. Dan Kennedy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Okay, minutes are accepted from um, February 1st. Okay, this evening we have a, a host of individuals who have come in to um, speak about the budgets that they would like to see approved, and uh, and we welcome them. Um, I believe I saw Fran on there before. Fran, you still here? Yeah. Okay, oh, terrific. All set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Fran, if we could, just to uh, keep this process um Going forward, uh, could you speak to your budget overall and uh, essentially tell us the health of the system that you essentially oversee and which areas will we be seeing increases in and which areas will be seeing decreases in? And uh, I leave it up to you. Yep. Okay. Do you want me to screen share the Budget sheets, or is that something Brian is doing? Who's? I'll turn. I'll do it for you. Okay. So, all right. Board of Health budget. You can see it's uh, basically uh, level, almost level funded. We bumped up the line for. Uh, it's hard to read these, but I believe it's for um, uh, outreach or mailings or advertising. There it is. So. That's the only difference from last year. So the amount is um, an increase of about $500. Mm -hmm. okay. And that goes back to, uh, you know, being able to put out more notices through in the scoop, et cetera, or sure. a direct mailing sure. given COVID problems. So. Exactly. So there's, that's that budget. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, do we have any questions for Fran before he leaves this page? Okay, Fran, keep going forward. Okay, Brian, you want to throw up the next one? Either foothills or solid waste. It's, yeah, foothills, foothills is out there. Foothills. Okay, so. This is actually a drop from our request from last year of about four hundred fifty dollars. We had um, we got some grant money, as you probably heard last year, and um, we are also um, going by a new population count, which turns out to be <laughs> an assessment that's lower than uh, last year for Whitney. So we're in good shape there. Terrific. Hey, Fran, what happened to the part-time help that got hired uh, to do contact tracing during COVID last year? That person still on the payroll? Yes, he is. Yeah. He's our uh, public health nurse. Mm -hmm. What's what's their job now that they're not doing contact tracing? They still are. because Just because the state gave up, we didn't give up on that. So we're doing contact tracing still. Even though the case counts are slowly going down, but that's we've had 17 cases in the last couple of weeks, so it's still um, 
not at its lowest ebb yet. It just, it, it seems like we're kind of wasting our time doing contact tracing at this point. If the, if the state isn't doing it, then you no. Know. Well, and having had COVID and gone through all this contact <laughs> tracing nonsense, and yeah. that's what it was, was nonsense. Because you don't, you be realistic. You don't know where you got it. You could have got it anywhere. Yeah, that's right. And, but the information is um, to inform others who may have been close contacts, really. So I, in your case, you know, might have been the family or neighbor yep. or who knows who you were in contact with. But that's for some preliminarily what that was for. And um, that really hasn't changed much. So you, we suspect there'll be, a, I mean, we hear every day a, a new policy coming out of uh, Mass DEP, DPH and um, the governor's office, but they've essentially washed their hands of a lot of things that people were um, you know, not ready to wash their hands of so far. There's still, we're, we're actually, Franklin County is still in the red zone. So, um, they haven't lifted mass mandates for the schools yet, and I'm not sure that's going to happen. The other other measures are. Well, anyway, don't want to get too uh, yeah. bogged down in the details, but I, I suspect things will change. But in that case, you know, we'll, the public health nurse has plenty of other things we can have to do. That I'm just going to say can. that's my fear is that we're now we're stuck with this person. Um, well, this person is largely going to be doing um, other things like clinics. And, uh, you know, we haven't quite worked it out because this is still an ongoing active epidemic. And um, until it really closes down, and we're sure it's not going to rear its ugly head because people were in this situation last summer. It said, oh, whoopee, June, July, we're down low. We don't have much but uh, things change pretty quickly. So we're not gonna jump the gun, I don't think, yet. So. I see the governor's opening up the state house. Yeah, he's opening up in a lot of things, but the schools in Boston aren't opening up, neither are Springfield or Worcester and some other areas are not following the guidance that his decree. And they've given all boards of health the option to be stricter uh, depending on the case counts and, you know, the infections in our town and area. So stay tuned. I think there'll be more when we, uh, we see this really subside. We'll figure out what to do with that person. Most of the, most of the cost for that is actually on the grant. So, by the way. Well, that's, um, well, hopefully um, you can put here to good, good use while those monies are still available to us. Oh yeah. Oh, we plan on it. <laughs> Every penny that we get in grant money is gonna be used for, um, you know, infrastructure. That's what the state wants and what they gave it, for, gave it to us for. Actually, they're gonna be requiring us to have a position like a public health nurse. So there won't be many ways around this. Um, we're fortunate really? to have, have the, yes. You're gonna, part of this grant funded effort across the state was to guarantee a minimum level of staffing with uh, ability to handle epidemics, clinics, things like that. So mm -hmm. this position is not gonna go away. Well, it may be taking on different duties, but it, yeah. it won't. Yeah won't be gone anyway okay now get your get your question tom yeah okay okay so solid waste yes this will be the third year of our contract you can see it it's almost the same as was appropriated last fiscal year mm -hmm. it up a couple hundred bucks because of the tip, tip fee went up two bucks a ton basically that's most of it Okay, um, so the tipping fee went down here? No, oh. went up. No, well, when I look, 
recycling. Oh, what is that? Is that the container? Yeah, yeah, that's tipping fees for ever since a year and a half ago or two years ago, the MRF's charging for recyclables. It turned out that for part of that time, the um, MRF was actually making more money on recyclables than it, than uh, tip fee they charged. So we got some money back and it's slowly dwindled, but that's helped the bottom line here. Um, we hope it, you know, stays somewhat in the positive side, but um, yeah. this was just our contract. The tip fees went up uh, in the third year by two bucks per um, ton. Fran, it's Donna, yeah. hi. Um, hi. Where does the income for the transfer station appear? Is it netted out or where does it appear? Uh, I just get that from um, um, Dara. I have make a request to get that. I think it was forty forty two thousand dollars or something like that. Last. So, so that's just for, for bag bag income. And, forty two thousand. Yeah. Forty two thousand. Yeah. Did you say that? So yeah, forty so, some thousand. Yeah, I don't know what it's something so, like that. So forty two thousand of the fifty seven thousand in general expense is covered. Qu quite a bit of it between that and. Um, Grant monies we get, uh, RDP grants, and uh, re money we get from the tip from the recyclables, we probably cover our budget, yeah. except for the the actual salary part. Yeah, it, it's actually reminds me of uh, I'm trying to talk to Paul, but I can't see Paul's face right now. Um, mm -hmm. One of the questions I have as a new committee member is when and how we see the netted out <laughs> impact of programs that have income as well as expense, which isn't really for Fran. It's just yeah, the first well, one. Uh, it's an important question. I think you should put that in there as a, as a line. I, I think you should too, but yeah. somebody should. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, this, yeah, that, this uh, budget does not reflect any income. And we have, you know, over the years, um, probably covered most of the, except for salaries, a lot of the costs for um, solid waste, which is no mean feat. I must say. Yeah. Um, so, in regards to Donna's question on income for for this particular budget group, uh, Brian, you are you there? You're there, right? Um, we. Yep. Um, that what we get we get the incomes for any revolving fund. That's correct, right? Um, so that money goes to the general, money from, from bag fees go to the general fund. Right. How about tipping fees or, you know, what we get from the MRF, does that show up too? It shows up in the, um, you mean the, the payments for recyclables. That shows yeah. up in a check when there is one. Um, yep. goes into the recycling revolving fund. Okay. To be used okay. to buy. <clears throat> okay. Um, we need to make a note on this and uh, it needs to be captured in the minutes that the finance committee needs to see income from this department and any other department where income is a, is a uh, is a factor. Um, so if you could please capture that, that would be great. Thank you. That, that's true for both the uh, solid waste and the foothills budget, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. A quick question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can I ask a quick question, Paul? Sure, yeah. sure. Go ahead. I just wanted to, to clarify. So um, while um, Fran's budget reflects um, uh, the costs that we have to pay, um, some of the cost is recaptured in the revolving fund and some of it is recaptured because it goes to the general fund. Right. Um, I don't know if we can make bag revenue go to the revolving fund or if that's even desirable. Um, but I guess my, the, the main point is if they're contributing to the 
general fund as well, then that is good to note. Um, are there expenses here that are simply offset in the revolving fund that don't show up in the budget? Like, are, are there expenses you're not claiming because you know you can pay for them with what you get from the MRF that goes in the revolving fund? Yes. Occasionally, we get, like, um, there was um, OSHA training and supplies, for example, and uh -huh. we use it for that. Um, we bought um, part of the, uh, part, I don't know if it was RDP or the revolving fund, part of the money for the, um, the new compactor, the paper compactor, uh -huh. use it for okay. that. And we actually intend to maybe buy a trash compactor. Right now we're renting it. And at some point we might be using funds. I also put that in uh, ARPM requests, by the way, but. Yeah, okay. So yeah. so I guess um, I'm sort of hearing what the finance committee is asking for kind of in the context of, um, mm -hmm. You're sort of only asking for what you need from the town here. Mm -hmm. And there are these other funds that are coming in that are actually paying for other things that you need, right? You're so right. in I, I guess I like the idea of having a better idea of what the big picture is, because if all of a sudden you don't get any MRF money, which kind of sort of happened a year and a half ago or so, um, then that has an impact on what expenses we have. Reminds me of sort of the school choice situation uh, when that first came up that the, the you know, if we're not reporting school choice and schools are using school choice money for something that doesn't appear in the budget, then we don't really have a, a full budget picture. So I kind of like that idea of having sort of a fuller picture, even if you're not requesting that money from the town. Um, and have, I, I think having contingency money is really a good thing. Um, so that, Mm -hmm. kind of keeping the big picture in mind that there you know that that we have been sort of quote saving money in our budget because you're using this revolving fund i think that's a good thing to report in right Sorry, that's probably longer than i should have said that. well it's because the, when we do spend it's not always a foreseeable budgetable expense so we buy blue bins for example with that uh, usually annually or semi-annually, it, it depends. So I don't, it, it's hard to actually put a budget for the, that year, that any fiscal year together. We're just happy to know that we have some cash there that we can use. Yeah, but, but maybe if it's reported sort of in arrears, like, you know, the, so that we kind of have a, a better idea. Because if those funds were to go away, then what those contingencies that you're, you're paying for are going to, you still need to be paid, right? Right. Well, right, that's, right. Yeah, there's no question about that, Joyce. And also, if they were to go away and uh, Fran was to come forth to try to replace those monies with budgeting monies from the town, then we'd rather not have to explain that then. It would, it, it would be an obvious, um, it would be an obvious cost for the town, because uh, then we would know what went away and um, how we have to support that. Um, so you're you're absolutely right, and Fran. So any kind of uh, you know any kind of income, um, you know, we certainly um, we certainly would want to see that so we can watch how this balances out. Uh, I assume Dara can also print a income for that. Um, revolving yeah. out to same for the RDP. I guess, I guess, I guess she, she could. Um, yeah. okay. So we're counting. Okay. Um, how are we doing here? Um, this was solid waste. Are there any questions, further questions for Fran in regards to solid waste? No. Okay. Um, All righty. Next one. Thank you. I guess I can leave, right? We're done. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, hold on. <laughs> you forgot. Ooh. All right. Um, Brian? 
Yeah. You have the hazardous waste disposal? Oh. Sure. Okay. Yes, I do have a couple other projects. <laughs> that was the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, right. So the request is the same. Yeah. Um, Thank okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think we might have come close to that or gone over by a hair, but I don't know of actual expended there. But it was, uh, it's a great option. Oh, okay. There it's expended. So it's pretty close. Okay. Yep. Seems flat. Okay. And last but not least. County solid waste. Okay, we have uh, Franklin County with a 7350 request. Mm -hmm. I I actually only have the request. I don't really have numbers for that. Maybe. Um, yep. Who is? Keep going, Brian. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Also, a pretty tiny increase. Uh, I would say. <laughs> And uh, actually, no it's, uh, you know, they provide a great service to us. We can do a lot more things because of the co collaboration with them. We'll probably get back to our bulky waste collection days, which they coordinate this year. It's, it's still a bit up in the air, but we want to do it safely. But this may happen in May again and probably in the fall. So. Okay, that's good. I look forward to those. Um, okay. Are there any questions for Fran in regards to any budget that he has put forth here? Um, so Fran, as, as it is right now, the, um, the department looks solvent and the town is being served um, with the budget that you currently have, and it will continue with the budget that you're requesting, right? Yes, sounds sounds good. Thanks. Hopefully, okay. we'll continue to serve the town well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Appreciate Ryan. your time Thank you. and your effort. Thanks. Have a good Thank evening. You. Yep. Yeah, you too. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so we got Border Hill Transfer Station. Okay. Um, next on the agenda, um, is Keith in the house? Yes, I am. How you doing? I'm doing good. Terrific. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming out and uh, bringing your budget forward. Um, and obviously, it's a it's an involved budget. It's uh, one of the larger budgets in town. And one that we obviously look forward to every year. Um, so, once again, you know, I would ask that you, um, with the screen in front of us, that you address any increases, decreases um, in the general health of the department. So, I'll give it to you, Keith, to take it away. Okay. I'll, I'll go through and, like you said, talk about the changes. Um, yep. In the under the highway salaries, the only thing that I'm changing is um, had to the overtime that line is more or less a um, a number that varies a lot from year to year, but it also um, it doesn't necessarily get increased um, when when a salary item line gets adjusted. A lot of times the, the overtime account doesn't. And so that one, as you can look back to 2021 expended, it was quite a bit short. So I'm just um, bringing it up a little bit, trying to keep it in line of where we were spending. Sure. Um, going into the general highways, um, the uniforms, um, the contract we have is a, was a 3% increase. So that's reflected there. Um, catch basin cleaning, um, that one had jumped up a fair amount. Um, again, 
the bid prices we get for for the contractor, um, their prices continue to jump up. I have no nothing else that I can really do about it. With the catch basins that we have in town, um, part of the agreement with like when we do notice of intents with the conservation commission, we have to agree to um, with DEP that they get cleaned out on a regular basis. So we have to do this. Um, and so it's, it's an increase for the contractor on an hourly rate there. Um, other than that, um, the only other thing is I'm bumping up is traffic paint. Again, the contractor um, this past year, the the pigment that goes into paint jumped up a tremendous amount and it consequently has raised prices for line painting. And um, if you remember a few years ago, we even, I to try to cut costs and save money there, we split the town up and we do not do the whole town each year. So um, it, um, we alternate some of the roads back and forth each, uh, so some roads only get it every two years to try to save money there. Um, that's it in the changes in the general highways. Um, okay. Um, before we leave this page, just let me interrupt quickly, Keith. Sure. Um, is, does anyone have a question on who's online in regards to this particular sheet that's before us now? Because Keith's here and he could answer that question. Um, so um, we do know that the COLA is not in here, right? And Correct. that, okay. And really and truly COLA is the, um, um, at this point, the only increase that your department will be seeing with respect to salary. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So we got, I guess we just have to wait for the, uh, the committee to uh, to bring that forth. Okay. Um, yep. This is Jim. Are, yep. are we are we going to cover capital expenditure requests at this time for the highway department, or is that going to be covered later? No, I think we do it tonight uh, at the end when um, you know Keith's gone over this, and you know while he's here, we'll discuss you know capital items that he he would like to see come forth. All right, so we'll do it all at once. Instead of yeah, like yes. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, Brian, want to take us to the next page? On the road. Oh. Okay. Okay, so going into the winter roads portion of the budget, um, uh, again, same thing happening with um, the overtime. That's like a fixed, same type of thing happens is that doesn't get escalated when salaries get adjusted. So it has to be adjusted occasionally. Yep. Um, materials, um, the only thing that's happened, sand prices have jumped up considerable in the last couple of years from what we were having to pay. Um, so there's a slight increase there. Other than that, um, the rest of the items are remaining the same. Mm -hmm. um, in oh well, so what was I? Oh, I know what I wanted to say, and I don't know why it didn't come through on Brian's on this, but on the over on the line going back to the overtime. Yep. Another reason that jumped up is I have. To comp I have to cover the expenditure to do the sidewalks. And that was never, that got put onto the winter roads budget, but never funded. So yep. I had written in there overtime and sidewalk contracting because I, I didn't want to mess up the, the Excel spreadsheet as far as all the formulas. So I just, that's another reason that that increased from 10,000 to 13,000 because okay. the select board agreed to hire a contractor to do the sidewalks, but then told me I had to pay for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, 
You know? it's, it's buried goes around, in there. Goes around, you know? Yeah. Okay. No, um, but I mean, that is the number, right? That you don't have to do number. it, but you got to pay for it. That's nice. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Um, um, so that's that's that was explaining that a little more. So yep. going into um, into road machinery, um, that's all being level funded. No changes there. Um, moving on to garage maintenance, the only change there really well one is a um, hundred dollars more for electricity, um, just to stay up with the the ever increasing cost there and $200 more in heating oil. Again, making the assumption that um, heating oil is gonna cost more next year than it did last year. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Um, Say, so I have a quick question, just, just going back to materials. That liquid de-icer, you, you, you probably told me this in the past, is that the stuff you put down before the storm or or like before it snows the, or ices up or the, the liquid de-icer the liquid we treat the salt with it to, and it enhances the how well the salt works and it so it makes the salt work better than okay. plain salt so it's treated salt um and again we we do it that way because i can save the town money by mixing it ourselves. We have the time, we have the labor to do it in the winter time and it's a lot cheaper than buying treated salt. Okay. Some towns okay. don't do not do it. They just buy the treated salt already treated. Well, you're paying, you're paying somebody else to do it at a higher, higher rate than we can do it ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, that's great. Um, thanks. Does anyone have any questions for Keith on winter roads, road machinery, or garage maintenance? Nope. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll go to the next one. The tree de section of my department, um, the only change there is outside contracting. Again, I'm having to respond. It's not an increase on the amount of hours. It's it's an increase on the hourly rate that I have to pay. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it's the same amount of work, but having to pay more for the outside contractor. Yeah. Who do we get to do that? Is that Ashlyn? No. No. Um, yeah. Ash oh, Ashlyn is a lot more expensive. I'm using Jim's tree service out of Greenfield primarily. Yep. Okay. Because I saw Aspen out there today, um, I think down Christian Lane, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. That would be all through Eversource. Eversource? Yep. Yeah, okay. Ash Ashblen is actually, they used to be just tree tree trimming and working with trees. Well, now Ashblen also has an electrical, you know, they also deal with linemen now that have work on lines. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions for Keith regarding the tree department? Um, I, have a, I have a question, Paul. Okay. For Keith. Um, Keith, you don't have anything in, in the new trees line. Are you just, when you do replacement trees for the trees that you have to take down, are you just paying for them out of the contracting line? No, that, that's, a, that's a good question. And that is, uh, the reason that is a zero there is because when we sell cordwood, the residents that buy cordwood in the town, we have a revolving fund that the money from that goes directly into the revolving fund and that gives us money to buy trees. So it saves us from having to, to use our tax, the, you know, out of my budget. So this is another hidden expense that's not recorded here because it's covered with income that you can count on. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, so I, I'm, I'm ready to talk. I've got, you know, be glad to talk about my capital request yep. if that's. I think now's the time to do it. Yep. 
Okay. Um, the 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 two closest things to as far as on my list, I'm there's projects I have or there's requests I have many years out, but the most the closest two items are the replacing the um, the New Holland tractor. The T it's called a TN65. That's the model, and also replacing the 2013 F-150. And when I had met with the Capital Improvement Committee, I had told them that the my priority at the moment was the tractor. Um, it is gotten to the point where it has a lot of failures. Um, there is many electrical issues going on it. Um, and when there, when those when those failures happen, mm -hmm. it's a lot of um, in the electronics in the wiring in the wiring harnesses and things like that. And when I've taken it to get work done, the parts are not available. As far as wiring harnesses, they're all obsolete and not available so that we have to pay a tremendous amount of money to have them chasing broken wires or trying to find out why the thing's not working. And when there's multiple computers in the tractor and one yeah. computer has to talk to another computer to make the thing move and it doesn't move, it's it's useless to me. So um, it's it gets used an awful lot. It gets, it's in the environment, you know, dust and dirty. Um, and so um, it, it's, it really has gotten to the point where I feel it needs to be replaced. Um, as far as my, the other things that I can tell you, you know, when I did look into it most recently, there's no, there's no electric version. You know, I know one of the things that as we're, you know, we're green community that we look need to look at as far as if, if there's an electric model that's, that's viable for us well there's not any yeah. electric tractors that are viable at this time for us um mm -hmm. so that's really not a possibility um and another thing that we need to keep in mind is that when it comes to service and parts to these you know to this type of equipment i need to make sure that it's something that is accessible for parts for us and it's yeah. not something like a like if i bought an electric spring trimmer where when that fails, you just throw it away and get a new one. Well, we can't spend a lot of money and then not be able to have um, equipment to get it serviced. Um, so that's pretty much it in regards to the tractor. As far as the uses go, um, it's it gets used an awful lot in the summer. Um, roadside mowing. Um, it. We do sweep. We have a sweeper that attaches to it that we do sweeping where needed. Um, York rake, things like that. It's the only. Um, it's the only tractor. The only op. The only thing that we have that can like unload pallets when we get deliveries, things like that, mm -hmm. um, with the forklifts. So um, it's a very versatile piece of equipment that we have. And when I don't have it, um, we definitely miss it. Tell them how long it's been out of service one time that uh, they couldn't get parts, Keith. You know, one of the things that, that happens with the, at least the way um, Hampshire Tractor, which is a New Holland dealer, is when you bring a piece of equipment there, it just gets in line with where, you know, when it gets there, it's whatever is in front of it before they'll even get address it. And so sometimes we like last year when we took it down there, we it was down there for about 43 or 44 days before I got it back. Um, and so when when that happens, you know, I just can't get it back. Um, so that's that gives you an idea. Right now, it presently has something wrong in the fuel system. It was running last week and just quit on us. And I believe at this point in time, it's probably the fuel injection pump, but I haven't had a chance to get it checked out yet. Right, right. Um, the, um, what, what are you hoping to replace it with? Something, you know, 
nothing any any different, so to speak. Just a, a same tractor, newer model, you know, newer model as far as so it's not like it would be any any bigger or any um, yeah. anything real different. So you think the forty two thousand would cover whichever tractor um you know you get the right price on i that's i'm just that's you know i um i had spoken to um in fact i'm just opening my email now because he just updated me this afternoon um yeah that that 42 should should be still good. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, that's interesting. 42. Huh? Um, do as far as the you know moving on to the other request that I had, you know, with yep. the the highway department pickup. Yeah. I mean, not the pickup, but the F550. Yeah. Um, you know, when that first got put on. The list about five years and each year it's been you know winding down one year at a time so here it is we're now talking about it um it was uh it was a uh, you know i put it on thinking that now would be the time it needed to be replaced but it can certainly continue to um to serve us well for another year or two it's um it, it although it recently has had the first type of repair that cost a lot of money in my mind. Up until last year, the, the kind of expenses we were doing on it were just routine stuff that we could do, brakes, things like that, brakes and alternators, very simple things. Well, this past year, it needed a lot of work done to the front end, and it had to go down to the Ford dealership for that, and that cost us $1,500 or $2,000. So um so it is starting to show major expenses but at the same point in time i feel that it's not really needed to be replaced next year next fiscal year didn't we just buy a new plow for that a couple of years ago key a couple of two years ago yes and that's you know so that's another reason i that's i another reason to keep certainly it. feel we can keep it for yep all right. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions for Keith in regards to these two capital items? Uh, um, what's your pickup, Paul, Keith? We have a question. Yep. Uh, Paul, Fred. Um, yep. It's not. It's not really a question for Keith as much as a thought for the finance committee, and that's maybe since we know that that dump truck is going to be a become problematic over the next couple of years, consider putting some extra money into the vehicle stabilization yeah. fund yeah. in anticipation. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, um, one comment I would make on that, and again, I'm, I'm not the one that handles the financial side of it, but I had seen somewhere on there where it was being recommended to borrow money for it. And so, you know, I understand right now we can borrow money pretty cheap interest rate wise, but at the same point in time, if we can if we could put the money away so that we have it in two or three years, why pay the yep. bank? Yep. I agree. I agree with that. So I'm um, just, uh, I'm not trying to make your life any tougher here than what it is, but um, it may, you know, when, when we go to town floor or we go have, you know, a year end meet, meeting um, very often when a question comes up, regarding the highway i would turn it over to you and sure. um it, it would probably be a good idea if you had numbers or a number to say this is what we spent in repairs for the tractor this is what we spent for repairs you know um on this uh, uh 550 just just let people know that money's going out the door towards something just and it's it's a good idea on our part to try to replace it i uh, yeah i'll be i'm prepared for that i actually pre prepared and submitted 
that kind of those kind of answers to the capital improvement committee okay. so the 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 project description that you're seeing here in front of you what i gave yeah. to the capital improvement committee is was a much more detailed breakdown okay all righty and um and the capital improvement committee is obviously on on board with both both of these yes yes okay, Dan. all right very good all righty um does that bring us to the end um of the highway yes i think it does any further questions for keith before um before he leaves um doesn't appear that way keith thanks again um good night, nice job thanks good night good night, good night. Okay. Um, okay, where'd my paper go? There it went. Okay. Uh, Water Department. And we now have um, the library. Um, is Who's here for the library? Jim Rothbard or? I'm here. Oh, hey, how you doing? Good, how about you? Terrific. Thanks and for uh, doing this. Much oh, you're welcome. Okay. Um, as I as we've as we've asked everyone else, um, your budget will come up on the screen, and okay. just ba basically speak to increases, decreases, changes, and how the overall health of the library is, and um, and you can take it from there. Um, okay. Brian, do you have the? Yeah. One second. So, I except for Comcast, the fire monitoring and maintenance, everything else was level funded. For years, there's been a sixty dollars in postage that has never been used. So I took it out of postage and added it into maintenance to give us an extra sixty dollars in maintenance. Comcast. The difference with Comcast reflects the fact that the rate we were paying now is not the same rate that we were paying when we first had Comcast. And brand new is $1,000 for fire monitoring because we are, the lift project has started and one of the requirements is that there be a fire monitoring system put in place. So. That's um, an additional thousand dollars that hasn't been in the budget before. Okay. Other than that, everything else has been level funded. Very good. Um, and how's everything going at the library? Uh, utilization still strong? Yes, I'm actually very proud of our numbers. We had 994 patrons visit the library last year. In March, we reopened to the public for patrons to be able to actually come in and pick out their own books. Um, we had 11,793 items circulate through our library last year. We have 389 residents of Waitley who are registered patrons and library users. And we loaned out 2,729 items of ours through interlibrary loan to other libraries. And we have currently have 12,349 items in our collection. And the total value of our collection is $2,666,176.80. And I'm just very excited by these numbers because we were still in the midst of a pandemic last year, but our patrons and residents utilized their library and I'm very proud of that. That's wonderful. Terrific. Um, do we have any questions, Cindy, regarding the library and the budget that's before us? Okay. Good report. Yep. Thank yep. you. Good report. Straightforward. Uh, so I've got I've got one thing. Do we have any report? How's the construction project going? I will defer that to Bob Smith, who's the chairman of the board and also on this call. Okay. Well, um, we, uh, hello. Can you hear yep. Me? Go ahead, Bob. Okay. Uh, we began construction about uh, a week and a half ago, and uh, construction is moving along 
uh, pretty well. We had asbestos abatement the past two days, so we closed the library for both of those days. We closed the library pretty much all of last week except for Saturday so that major smashing and bashing could get done. Um, they are uh, super careful. They've constructed a, um, I guess you'd call it a hut around the uh, first floor um, opening that they're cutting in. And uh, down below, um, they have that blocked off as well. They've uh, protected the floor. Seems to be um, going pretty well. And we are about somewhere around eight or 9% into the project in a week and a half's time. Pretty good. Um, Thank no. you. Any Paul, questions there's no, for Bob? Paul, there's just that, uh, did anybody have any questions about that capital request for the door replacement? That's that's where we're going next. Okay, Go okay. Sorry. Well, it's just um, as far as that door is concerned, that's the um, that's a fire exit, uh, and we thought that we would be able to replace the door with something simple, until the building inspector informed us that nothing is simple, um, and that's why we've made that request. Um, because it, it is a fire egress out to the fire escape and um, it just doesn't work anymore. It's got to have a panic bar and all of that stuff um, yep. because it's a big code. Okay. And where did you get that number from, Bob? We, uh, we asked the, the contractor who is uh, undertaking the lift project um, to price it out for us. Not that we were going to have him do it, but we just wanted him to do that. And he gladly did. And that was uh -huh. the price that he came back with. Gotcha. Um, uh, I, Bob, uh, I have a question. Um, it, it's too bad about the building inspector and the timing because that could have been built into your request for CPA funds, but you didn't know that. <laughs> right. It's a, you know, um, yeah. is there, will you spend the whole, all of the CPA grant on the lift or c what, could there be a balance that could help to pay for this fire door? Oh, I do believe. Or is it too early to ask that question? Uh, it's probably too early to ask that question. One can assume that that in the early going of a project, um, hidden hidden things that once you start ripping stuff apart, you find are going to crop up early. I had this conversation with Brian this morning, um, so I don't. I think it's probably too early to say, but I don't uh, anticipate there's going to be a lot of um, of surplus in that CPA grant money. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bob. Um, are there any questions for Bob regarding anything to do with the library, capital improvement, or all of the above? Okay. Um, some, somebody might want to speak to the, there's also a request for new Patriot computers also. $5,000. And oh, yeah. And I'm sorry. Just patron computers, it would be two staff computers and two okay. computers for patron use. Gotcha. Four computers. Do you want okay. to speak to that, Cindy, at all? The computers that we currently have were purchased and installed in 2014. They are not going to be compatible with Windows 11 when Windows 11 comes out. We've already had one patron hard drive crash and now it's totally unusable. The primary circulation computer at the circulation desk is basically on its last gigabyte. It, it is very slow to open up. If you have more than one program going at a time, it crashes at least once a week. Um, it easily on a good day, it will take 10 minutes to boot up. So that's why we were requesting funding to get some new computers so that they can be updated and upgraded and not have to take 15 minutes to boot up and have a patient ask you for a book and sit there for five minutes while it's thinking that's going to look for the book for you. Gotcha. That seems a reasonable Sounds approach. reasonable. Yep, absolutely. Any questions um, for Cindy now that she's back on in regards to the uh, in regards to the computers? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, both Cindy and Bob, um, for your time this this evening. Thank and, you. And uh, we hope hopefully we'll be seeing you at the library.
Okay. I okay. hope so. <laughs> okay. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, are we back? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Brian um, sent sent out a uh, uh, an email earlier um, talking about the change for our next meeting. Um, everybody have a chance to see that. Um, yeah, Paul. Paul, we still have we still have Lane for the water department before we. Uh, yeah. Wayne, he's been waiting. Yeah. Don't forget the water. <laughs> I forgot about Wayne. Oh well. Okay. I'm sorry. Where's my? Uh... Oh, it's right here. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Water. You know what it is? I have the water department before the library. The library cut in on on Wayne. Well, is Wayne here? Yep. Wayne, how you doing? Not too bad. You? Good. Still playing baseball or what? Me? No, that's finally over. <laughs> <laughs> right. The last time I saw him, it, it must have been November. He was heading yep. out of town with the whole family, and they were going to a baseball game somewhere. <laughs> uh, travel travel team. I was shocked. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Um, we're at the water department, and... Once again, I'll just ask you to speak to uh, increases, decreases, changes, and how the overall health of the department is. Uh, so just speak to that um, page that we have up on the screen. Thank you. All right, so I guess start with the salaries. It's not, this one went up because they're looking at moving, call it my position up five hours but that's not finalized until the commissioners vote on it, but it sounds like it's going to happen. So that's kind of the big increase in the salaries. Mm -hmm. Now I'll start the dinner expense. Dues and meetings went down 50 bucks. Um, office supplies stayed the same. Advertising stayed the same. Electricity actually, I'm planning on it going down, which since I know, even though we're putting in the center of town booster station, it still should go down. Because with the installation of the booster pumps we put in here the end of last summer, it cut the run time for the pumps a little bit over half, almost to three quarters. So we've actually, on our electric bill since last when they go online October, they've been on average like two to four hundred dollars cheaper a month. Mm -hmm. The next one, the phone, I added another thousand dollars to that because the cable got a little more expensive. And then again, with the addition of the booster station center of town, I think we're gonna go either cable or cellular for the communications from that building down to the main building. The, the next one. Testing in chemicals. I'm hoping increasing it by $2,000 is enough. They, they changed a lot of rules. But the big one that it is now is the PFOS, which I don't know if you guys heard about that, but we're it's now PFOS. required to PFOS, the stuff they found in the Westfield water from Barnes Airport, the firefighting oh. home. Yep. Yes. They're now requiring us to test that quarterly, four times a year, and it's about $900 a test. Wow. The next one, whatever it is, maintenance, that it just stayed the same because I can't plan out. I mean, in the last two years, we've spent a lot of money out of the retained earnings and put new equipment in. So I mm -hmm. can't imagine the maintenance should go up. The parts, again, I went way down on that because there's a lot of new stuff here. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. The truck maintenance, I went down a little because well, that's new. So really that thing just deals with oil changes for now. Engineering, I went down a little bit. The building issues, again, we put money into that in the last two or three years. So there's really not much left to do to that to upkeep it. Our asset management software, that went down by $1,000. I mean, that was a, it was a three-year thing. So we knew it would have, what it was going to cost every year. Mm -hmm. The debt service meters, that's paid off. The Mill River, we have one more year. And I think it happens. We're pretty sure it happens the following year. And then the debt service for the manganese filter loans, that finally got finalized and it's a little lower than what we thought because we didn't use the whole thing, but we finally have a hard number on it. Yep. And that's about it. So the total of the operating budget actually went down a little bit. Well, it did. probably more than a little bit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Wayne? Yeah? This is Jim. Yep. What, what factors are driving the need for additional five hours a week? Mainly the state. <laughs> it's the increase sampling, the increase paperwork that goes along with the sampling. They actually, I mean, I might shoot myself, but I don't think we need it yet. The state DEP would look at it as like once you, they look at it as, as once you hit around 300 customers, it should be a 30 hour week position. And once you hit 400, you should be a full 40 hours, which we've been behind that because I mean, right now we got, we're at 401 customers. So by their standards, we should be full-time, but I still don't see a need for 40 hours a week, but 25 is tight now. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything, um, just, um, what, what Hello. has there been any increase? In, no, the, uh, no. in the cost of water to the residents? No, not in two years, three years, two years. Okay. And what is that per gallon at this point? For 465. 465? Oh, no. <laughs> 465, a thousand gallons. A thousand, yeah. thousand gallons. Oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> Woo. Um, <laughs> okay, nobody be washing their cars at 465 a gallon, I'll tell you that much. Um, okay, um, any storm clouds on the horizon? Hopefully not. I mean, we're in the plane of, you know, I mean, looking into the wells would be the next big thing. Yep. Re, you know what I mean? Redoing the wells, pulling them. Mm -hmm. When do you see that happening? Mm. Five years, maybe. Okay. You mean replacing? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, they've been, the big one, the main one's been in there for, what, 12 years now? Yeah. yeah. And the backup one's been in there, I think, 15, which really didn't get used much. But the thing that worries me is that main one. I mean, the thing was running for at points like 40 something days straight, 24 hours a day. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, no capital improvement from your department at this point? No, just, well, yeah, no. We got. Our normal, we want to start putting away the $5,000 a year to replace the pickup in 10 years. And yeah. we have a state mandated, our state mandated five year tank cleanings up this year. So this summer we got, 
put away six thousand dollars to pay for the divers to go in and clean and inspect the tank. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So we got the truck. We got tank cleaning. Okay. Um, good. Manganese is good. Manganese is awesome. Almost okay. non-existent. <laughs> oh, terrific. <laughs> and um, have we come across any more endangered species in the Mill River? Nope. No, not so they far. And hopefully after this last survey or whatever they got to do down there, they don't find nothing else. <laughs> okay. All right. No, terrific. Okay. That's good. Okay. Um, before uh, Wayne leaves, does anyone have any questions? In regards to uh, anything he has presented regarding the uh, the water department, and as we know, uh, this is the enterprise fund, and all of this, all of these costs are, absor are absorbed by the users of um, of the water department itself. So, um, the finance committee serves as more of an um, in an overwatch capacity, and. Uh, just to make sure that discussion is front and center. Okay. All right, Wayne. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. All right. Brian, is there anybody else I forgot on here? <clears throat> I don't think so. Terrific. Yeah, not bad. All right. Um, all right. So, um, let me just uh, let me just revisit uh, the date for our next meeting, Brian. What's that date? Well, you and I had the discussion about it would have been March first, but right. Right. Was... Yeah. So so it so it turns out that Frontier Regional High School has their public uh, meeting for their budget uh, on that same night, and I we committed to attending that meeting. Um, because they've asked us to, and it's, uh, so we're going to meet them halfway and, um, you know, I will attend the meeting and they in turn will, uh, be presenting to us, um, following that, um, at another meeting. And, um, so we were hoping that we could take that meeting. It's on a Tuesday and move it over to Thursday, March 3rd, um, can I, um, I'd like to take um, a roll call as to um, the approval of that change. So, Tom? Yeah. Okay, Dan? He's muted. Dan, are you in? You out. You're, you're muted, I'm, Dan. Uh, me? Dan is muted. Yeah, okay, how about that? Just, there you go. Yeah. All, right. All right, Dan. Okay with me. Okay with you, Jim. Yes. Patty. Not here. Not here. Donna. I have another meeting at seven that night, so I'll have to leave midway. We'll be okay. done by seven. That, yeah. That would be very good work. Very okay. good work. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda. Yes. You're good. Okay, Brenda. Thank you. All right. So, um, so we've uh, officially um, moved the meeting over to Thursday, um, March third. What? A, I'm just curious about Fred and Fred and Joyce. So oh, sorry, Fred and Joyce. Could you do it? Could you do the third? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Leaving you out. Okay. Okay. Very. Good. And the, and then Paul, you had we had also talked to the the schools were also requesting the eighth, right? Which is also not on our calendar. Yeah. Um. So let's uh, let's discuss that for a second. Um, the schools would like to come in now, Brian. You've had you've been the point person with the schools, so it only makes sense for you to um, sort of uh, to give give us the background on this. A little bit in the time, date and time. Yeah, so we've been going back and forth to try to get to try to line up the schools to um, come in, obviously, and uh, 
uh, I guess I'm sympathetic to the fact that they have five different, five different, um, well, they're dealing with uh, four different finance committees and they're trying to figure out, you know, their meetings. Um, so they were wondering if, if they could come on March 8th um, to the finance committee and talk about uh, Frontier and elementary school. So we will take a roll call again as to whether or not um, that is. Hey, Paul, um, Paul, before yes. I, is that instead of the meeting on the 15th or in addition? It's going to be taken out of the 15th and moved to the 8th. Well, I just want to make that clear. Yeah. Um, right now, what's planned for the 15th, Brian, in terms of people? departments. Do we have anything uh, on the books? Yeah, um, yeah, in addition to the schools, we had uh, recreation, uh, treasurer, um, and then insurance benefits and town building. So it's really myself, Lynn and uh, Chris Williams. So I can I can check to see if uh, to see if we can move those as well. Um, okay. We will bring the schools in first, though. Right? I mean, yeah, that's typically what, what we do. And Right. Okay. So okay, we're, so we're going to keep the meeting open for the 15th for now. But if we can move the people, then it'll be canceled. Right? Yes. I think okay. that would be a good approach, yeah, to have a placeholder yes. there. Right. We'll just keep, keep it as a placeholder. And... Um, Hopefully, we'd be able to um, to do it all on that one night, understanding that the schools are the largest part of the budget, and that um, at times we get into a discussion that uh, that takes time. So, anyway, we'll keep that, and we'll just have to wait to see how that plays out. So, with regards to these changes, that our meeting now um, is on the 8th with the schools. Brenda, are you okay with that? Yes. Donna? I have a meeting from five to seven that I can't miss. So I will be there for the second half of the meeting. Okay. All right. Jim? Yes. M myself, yes. Dan? Yes. Tom? Yes. Okay. So it's agreed upon that um, we will have the schools in on the 8th and we'll have a placeholder for the 15th and Brian will have a discussion with um, the three departments that he mentioned to see if we can move those over to the 8th following uh, the school discussion. Okay. Brian, is there anything else that we need to uh, touch upon here? Uh, uh, Fred and Joyce is the 8th, is the, uh, the all right? Yeah. Fine with me. Joyce, you okay? Yeah, she's giving a thumbs up. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Um, all righty then. So that's, uh, I think that brings us to the end of the meeting. Be prior to closing out, um, does anyone like to say anything in regards to the process, the budget, what we heard this evening, and or what's coming up no okay i'll make a motion to close the meeting do i have a second i second, second. okay we'll take a roll call tom yep dan yes oh yes jim yes donna yes brenda yes okay and it's meeting is adjourned Thank you very much for attending. And um, we'll Learn. see everybody on the next fix, meeting. Fix your button on your computer. <laughs>